This is my ground for the front trunk right here. It goes along here to the control module, which is right here. These are for the struts. I wired it, the wires hidden underneath this black plastic tab, and it goes up to this strut right here. And then same thing with this wire to this strut right there. I have the splitter plugged in right here that takes this wire and it goes to this motor right here that everything is plugged into. All the wires are secured right here and they go here and then I just had this plugged into the battery terminal. Also another reason why I'm removing the powered trunk is because the emergency release latch doesn't even work. Like here, let me pop this open. I wired it through here. Now I believe this only works if the car doesn't have power, so that means that the low voltage battery is dead. However, I believe this accessory has actually been killing my low voltage battery. That's actually the big reason why I'm removing it. And I tried to pull this latch when the battery was dead. No go, it didn't open then. That's another kind of safety thing why I'm removing this. First thing that we're gonna start doing is we're gonna kind of basically work backwards. And I'm going to be removing the latch right here that goes on to the back. So it's with this bolt and this bolt. It uses the Tesla OEM bolts. Um, so these are gonna stay with the car. We're just removing this back panel that goes on it. Someone's mowing their lawn so you might hear that in the background, but once you remove the two bolts, it's gonna kind of fall off just like this. From here, you're going to need to pull this lever back and out. See this little black plastic piece right here that's for the powered trunk so this little lever you're gonna have to take like some needle nose pliers pull it off pull this little black piece out and then put this back on and that way it will separate you can see I removed this little black plastic piece right here it's just dangling now and then I also put the latch back on now it comes with this splitter that goes to the powered trunk you're gonna want to remove this splitter and then plug this part back into the original front trunk latch. So with this latch completely removed and the original wire back in, this is just for the trunk part. You can see that I put the two bolts back in and now the latch is here. We might need to play around with it to make sure it's aligned a little bit later, but we'll do that after we pull all this out. The next thing that I'm gonna do is while I unclip the zip tie for this, I'm gonna pull this back through the car to get it on this side. And from here, I'm going to unzip tie uh, these wires and have everything put right here. This is like the electronic suction module. So we just need to unplug everything related to this. So I pulled out the electronic suction module with the latch part right here. Uh, all the wires are essentially pulled out. They're just dangling here, except for one. This goes over there. We have this one right here. It's connected to this splitter. So this goes back into the car and we just have to unplug this one from this module. And the next thing I'm going to do is remove the zip tie from here and from here. These are connected to the actual electronic struts. So I'm going to unplug these here and these here. Let these cables just dangle, remove this and everything else outside of the car. And then we'll work on removing these struts for the other ones. I removed the strut, so that's just dangling there for that. Same with this one as well. About to remove everything out of the car, we just need to unbolt this ground and then we'll pull it through and pull all this out. I'm not going to show in this video how to detach these. It's basically just unplugging all of the different attachments and putting it back in the box. But these are the guts of the powered trunk. And now we just have the struts that we need to deal with. So all I'm going to do, this one's pretty simple. You're just going to unbolt these and you can see this band right here there's one down here also you're going to basically just want to shove like a pry tool inside of here or like a screwdriver or a pick and you're going to want to pull this and then i'll pop it out of this socket a good tip on what to do is to first pop out the top metal part so use your pry tool to pop that out now the bottom one is extremely hard to pop out i'm gonna recommend that you use your 10 millimeter and unbolt it from the frame. So take off the little attachment part with the actual strut still attached to it. And then once that's all off, you can use your pry tool to separate the strut from the actual frame part. And then you can bolt that back down. Then you're gonna to want to grab your original OEM part that goes on the hood. 
You're gonna want to put that back on everything. The only problem is you can't put the original strut back on yet. These powered struts, they don't go up as far as the OEM struts. So you are gonna have to have someone help you to either hold the hood or you're gonna have to be extremely careful because once you take off both these struts, it's gonna fall, there's nothing supporting it. So just be careful there. This bottom bracket I had to remove to get the pry tool in this little crevice right here. You can see it's a bit scratched up, but when you put these in, you're gonna have the skinny side go down and this long side go up with the OEM brackets that are gonna just screw into here and you're gonna do that on both sides. So our powered struts are removed. Again, these are shorter than these ones right here. We have our original struts in. This is going with that out. We have this bracket. Again, to take off the power struts, you're probably gonna have to remove this bracket. You're definitely gonna have to remove that old bracket and you're gonna put these new struts on, or well, these old new struts on. And you can close the front and it'll just pop open just like this. It's not powered, but that's all right. Make sure you align the latch up good. Mine is okay. It's gonna need some lubrication on the actual latch part because it is squeaking a little bit. But when I do close it, this is the important part. You wanna make sure that when it closes, it goes straight down. You can hear it kind of rubbing. And this rubbing is because the actual latch is a little bit too low. So I'm gonna to have to unbolt those two 10 millimeter bolts in the front that I was showing you in a previous video on how to remove the front. And you basically just slide up the latch a little bit until it's super flush with the body for the front is. But it goes straight down, which is the important part. So we'll close it like this. And you can see that there's a small line right here and it matches up with the small line right here. So everything looks good. And now we're going to pop it back open again so we can install the front tub. And that is just essentially putting it back in, aligning it with these clip parts. Now that one again is broken. That clip, that clip. We have another clip right here. And then there's also these little teeth. It's gonna go in right here, along here. So that clip, that clip. There should be a clip there, however mine's broken. And then we're just going to put the top back on and that should be it. One thing I did forget, it's that on the crash guard right here in the center, there's this little speaker portion. So that's just being held on by some 3M adhesive. So I just pull that off and can pull the adhesive off as well. You're not gonna get the entire adhesive off, so you might wanna use some rubbing alcohol if there's any remain, which is what I have right here. So I could use some rubbing alcohol later and take that off, but here's the speaker off and that's all gonna go back with that kit. 